Hi, my name is John. Welcome to another Vivo review. This time I'm going to be looking at a propane melting furnace. I've been considering doing some more casting for quite some time, and one or two of my viewers emailed this saying, John, why not ask Vivo to if you can review one of their little melting furnaces? Um, so I, I did email them, and they've sent us this one here, which is a six kilogram furnace. Everything is supposedly included. We'll have a look, see what you get. Before I start, I want to make one or two things perfectly clear. I don't work for Vivo, I don't get paid for doing this. What I don't get to do is keep the product. What you're going to get here is an honest, straight, fair review. If it's shite, I'll just tell you. So we'll take it out of the box, have a look, light it up. I'm going to try and melt in some bronze. You can melt aluminium on a kitchen, cook however you want to. Bronze is the thing I'll be casting, so I'm going to go straight in, see if it'll melt bronze. Right, let's have a look, see exactly what you get. Instruction book, instruction manual, in English as well. Propane hose for the regulator. Decent fittings on the end as well, not just hose clips, I quite like that. Little gas valve come gas jet. Wooden handle, I'm not quite sure what that's for. Burner, or at least part of the burner. Quite heavy material that, looks quite well made. Ah, now we're getting into it. That's the lid for the furnace, obviously stainless steel. This rock wool type stuff does need treating. Uh, you can get a spray that goes on it and the spray hardens because the fibres aren't very good for you. Right, so we've got a furnace lid. A set of tongs. Ah, suitable. Probably a graphite base crucible, quite a decent size. It's supposed to melt six kilograms of brass. It's about half the size of the one I used to use, but it, that's quite useful. They are, they are expensive just to buy the crucible. Right. And this is the, the furnace proper. Like I say, this does want treating. That'll be a fire brick in the bottom of there. Which is all stainless as well. It's obviously where the, the burner goes into there. Quite a tight fit actually. Much better. That's a burner in there. Quite simple, the way, it, the way it's all. I like it. How can they make this for the money? I think really we need to get the propane bottle out, uh, fire it up, just a little bit of heat because that needs tempering, you don't get it really hot at first. Then I'll probably make some tools to hold this with, some crucible tongs in a pouring shank. But I think we can certainly light it up and get some heat into it just to basically harden off the crucible. I've got it hooked up to a propane bottle, so that's the fire brick that goes in the bottom. And then a little bit of cardboard between the fire brick and the crucible, that turns to carbon when it burns and stops the crucible sticking. So basically, if we turn the cylinder on, I can hear propane coming out of there, it should light. Which it has to an instant light. Want a little, very light flame, just to get some heat into that crucible. I don't want to Get it red hot already. B 
pleasant actually because it's bloody cool out here today. I'll bring the camera in, you can have a look and see what's going on in there. It's a nice quiet torch but it's turned right down. I just want to get a little bit of heat into it. Things are starting to warm up quite nicely in there now. Right, that's well at the temperature now, that's a nice bright red glow. That'll melt bronze no problem. Let that cool down, the crucible will cool down nice and slowly. It's now been up to full temperature, so it's cooked basically, ready to work. Before we start doing any casting, I want to mention a little bit about safety. This is the minimum safety gear you need. A pair of decent welding gloves, a full face mask, that's a must. Your eyesight is the most important thing. Ideally, a leather apron and proper leather boots. Also, you need a bucket of water handy, and when you're casting things, you treat everything as either being wet or hot. Molten metal doesn't like water, it flashes into steam and explodes everywhere. So all your moulds, anything you're going to put into it, tongs, crucible tongs, anything, they've got to be hot. Wet or hot, simple as that. I've made one or two tools to make handling the crucible a lot easier. I've done a lot of casting, so basically I've got a rough idea what I'm going to be doing. I modified the set of tongs that come with a melting furnace. You simply go over the top of there like that and you squeeze them hands together and it lifts the crucible out. You can't put any excess weight on the crucible because the handles touch each other. That's perfectly safe to lift the crucible. Right, so the crucible tongs simply go on there like that. Really secure and safe. Next, pouring the metal. You see some people that, that are trying to do this, not a good idea, you end up getting hurt. What you need is a pouring shank, really simple, a ring of steel on a handle, that goes onto there, then you can pour the metal. You're in full control of it, you can support it with one arm, perfect. And that's, you've got full control, all the weight on one arm, perfect. All I want to do is cast some scrap bronze into a piece of bar. I've got some green sand here. I know this sand's not green, it's red. The green sand means it's mixed with water, it's tempered with water. I've had this sand for years. Um, you just keep on reusing it. That's what we're going to use for a more for a pattern. I'm going to fill the plant pot up. I'm using a plant pot because I haven't got any casting flask left. And the plant pot obviously won't burn. All we'll do is ram the sand down around it. I'm going to put some vent holes in the sand just to let the, the steam escape. So basically, we're going to pour molten bronze into there and hopefully we'll get a piece of usable bronze stock. A little piece of cardboard and the crucible I've got full of bronze of known quality. Warm it up slowly, not a race. Warm it up there quite merrily. It's about 12 degrees centigrade, you need to melt bronze. It's definitely starting to melt in there.
it's about back into the furnace to cool down slowly. <coughs> I'm not expecting much because it's not a proper mold. I just wanted to prove the point that it would in fact melt bronze, which it did, no problem at all. Now we have a piece of bronze bar. I'll clean it up, put it in the lathe, but it is definitely a piece of bronze bar. That's the bronze. I've just cut the top of that off with an angle grinder. Lovely and clean. We'll put it in the lathe, give it a quick skim, see where it cleans up like. I still want to do little parts where the sand hasn't been formed properly but it's really clean, nice, solid metal, a little bit more time and patience making better molds and that's perfect usable bronze stock and exactly what we came from, it is a real, real stuff, I'm very happy with that. I'm sure you'll agree it does exactly what it's supposed to do, it melts metal, it melted bronze, no problem at all, so obviously it's going to melt aluminium at a much lower temperature. This particular one is 6 kilogram, the deal with 12 kilogram one, I might say if it'll Sends a 12 kilogram one, it'll be more use for what I do, and I can always give this one away. There is a link in the description box to these particular furnaces. If you do click on a link and do decide to buy something from Vivo, I do get a little bit of commission. Not enough to stop working altogether, but it all helps just to make more and better videos. Don't forget, safety first, hot or wet, and you must, you must wear a face shield and gloves as a minimum. Anyway, thanks for watching.